The main trailhead for Johnson Canyon Trail starts right beside Johnson Canyon Chalets. It's one and a half miles or about two and a quarter kilometers all the way up to the upper falls. Most people will only go to the lower falls, which is half a mile or about 0.8 kilometers. It's a nice easy walk, especially up to the lower falls, but trust me, you want to go all the way up to the upper falls. It's an incredible hike up a narrow canyon. One of the cool things about canyons is that they're quite rare in the Canadian Rockies. We had canyons, then we had an ice age, and the rivers of ice inherited river valleys carved by water and the canyons were all widened. But in a few cases, situations have occurred that have allowed new canyons to form geologically in the blink of an eye. When we see canyons today, they're all around 10 to 12,000 years ago, and usually have formed from a number of main reasons. When a river carves a valley, water is very efficient at making sure that the river tributaries uh, cut down into the bedrock at about the same rate as the main tributary. So the side channels meet the river at the same level. Glaciers aren't like that. A tributary glacier doesn't have the same ability to carve deep into the valleys as do the main glaciers. So when the, those glaciers eventually melt, those side glaciers leave high valleys suspended above the much lower valley of the main tributary. And that's why many of the hikes in the Canadian Rockies involve a long climb to get up into these hanging valleys left, left behind by glaciers. One of the other mechanisms that can cause the formation of canyons geologically in a very short time is in the case of Johnston Canyon where a landslide came down and actually dammed the original channel, forcing it to find a new channel and in doing so to cut back down into the rock to try to get down to the level of the Bow River into which it, into which it flows. So each of those situations take place in a fairly quick time and represent a blink in the eye geologically, but make these canyons particularly special. This is a trail that I have hiked literally hundreds of times. I've never seen it this quiet. As far as I can tell, I'm the only one on the trail at the moment. I'm sure that'll change as I have to return on the same trail. But this is why I come out early. This is why I wanna make sure that I'm getting the experience that I'm selling to you. As a guide, I wanna make sure that all of my guests are coming out and truly getting the experience that they see in the brochures. And this is how you do it. You do a different schedule from everybody else. It doesn't take long before you start to head into the actual canyon and before the walls start to get steeper and the river to cut down into that bedrock and begin that process of creating what we call Johnston Canyon. Okay, it is cold out here today. And so I wanna share with you a few of my winter hiking tips. The first one is it's never fun if you're cold. So you wanna always make sure you've got the right gear. Good gear lasts for years. So don't skip out on a good set of clothing. For me right now, on my upper body, I'm wearing five layers. Three of those are icebreaker a merino wool fabric that just helps me stay warm and regulate my body temperature. The nice thing about layers when you're being active in the outdoors is you can add layers on, take layers off as you 
heat up and cool down. It's important to always have as well a nice big thick layer for when you stop for lunch. You want to make sure that you're not going to suddenly cool down when you stop being active. Another thing that I always try to put in my kit in the winter are the chemical hand warmers. Those are really nice to have, especially if like me, you're a photographer and you're always handling cold items like cameras and tripods. Having those hand warmers in your glove can just help make sure that your fingers are working and that you're enjoying being out in that landscape, in that weather. Proper clothing, proper gear makes all the difference. These are the Yak Tracks ice cleats that I wear. And what they do is they give me really, really, really good grip on this trail. And so when I'm walking, I don't have to worry too much about slipping around on the trail. Good traction means a good experience. Before you know it, you come to a junction in the trail. To go to the lower falls, stay to the right. If you're like me and you've got the trail all to yourself, hit that lower falls right away before the crowds start to catch up to you. Enjoy it for a few minutes and then start the climb up to the upper falls. The upper falls is another 1.6 kilometers up the trail. And from this point, it does start to take a turn for the vertical. This is where you start to do a little bit more climbing. It's still a pretty easy trail, but uh, a little less level than what we've experienced so far. Let's check out the lower falls. As you check out the waterfall, I want you to think about just how waterfalls are formed, because that's something we often don't consider. And in fact, waterfalls tend to only persist in one situation in nature. And that's when you've got a hard layer of rocks that sits on top of a soft one. When the water flows over that hard layer of rocks, the softer rocks beneath are gonna be worn away that much quicker. And so what that means is you often have a cave underneath the waterfall. But eventually the weight of all that water on that hard layer means that it's going to snap. And at that time, the waterfall migrates up the valley just a little bit. That's why many waterfalls have a canyon in front of them that forms as the waterfall slowly moves up the valley. In this particular case, you can see that the waterfall used to fall directly beneath where I am now, and now, it's formed a new waterfall a little further up the valley, and that's a key process in this canyon forming. When we talk about a layer of hard rocks on top of soft rocks, think of it as a series of steps. There are several hard layers in the rocks as you hike up this trail. So we're gonna see a series of waterfalls all the way up to the upper waterfall when we actually leave the canyon, when we top out on the canyon. Now, as you get to the falls, check out the plunge pool down below. This is where you can see where the waterfall originally fell directly below my feet here. Do be sure to head into the little man-made cave at the far end of the bridge. It's a small space, so take your backpack, leave it outside. If there are people lining up, line up outside of the cave. There's no room to line up inside. There's only room for 
a couple of people at a time. And so be patient as you go in. Watch your head and watch your step as you come through. Once you're in, you get right up close and personal with the waterfall and the plunge pool down below it. In the spring, you are right in the spray when you stand here. So take off your sunglasses, keep your lens cap on as you come through and pull out your camera for just a quick photo. If you happen to be here kind of mid season when the waterfall is frozen, but not frozen solid, it actually forms a pane of glass in front of the water. And you can just see the water flowing behind it. Even today, there is a little bit of evidence of water flowing behind that curtain of ice. So the water keeps flowing, the falls keeps falling, but the ice provides a veneer in front of it. It's amazing when you hike this trail today and you see all of these man-made boardwalks bolted right into the cliffside. When I first hiked this trail, there was nothing but a little bit of wooden crib work as you made your way up the canyon. So this has made it that much durable for much higher numbers of people to come up here. And at the same time, it's helped to encourage people to stay on the trail. And it has helped to reduce the erosion in this very, very sensitive landscape. The first falls you encounter once you get to the top of the climb after the lower waterfalls is the Twin Falls. You can still hear it gurgling under the ice here. The water constantly flows, constantly moves, and is constantly deepening these canyons. This is the approach to the upper waterfall. Um, at this point, the trail forms a Y junction. The left trail goes to the top of the upper falls, where the lower trail to your right is going to take you to the, the base of the falls. Definitely, if you've come this far, take the time to do both viewpoints. So I'm going to go to the lower viewpoint first. This is what it looks like as you approach the base of the Upper Falls. From the lower viewpoint of the upper Johnston Canyon waterfalls, it's a short, sharp uphill to the viewpoint above the waterfall. It's a must-do and gives a very different perspective. Here, you'll get a great view of the hard layers of rock that create the upper lip of this highest waterfall in Johnston Canyon. From here, most walkers will backtrack towards the trailhead, but some intrepid explorers can continue an additional three kilometers each way to several tiny spring-fed pools that don't freeze in winter. The total gain from the trailhead to the ink pots is 375 meters, and with ice cleats, that makes for a long walk in the short days of winter. Another good reason for an early start. Most people will return on the same trails, past the upper and lower waterfalls. There is an alternate route that avoids having to retrace your steps through the crowds on the main Johnston Canyon Trail, but for that, you'll need to hire a local guide as we don't share this on social media. I'm back at the car now. The trail is a lot busier 
Um, Johnston Canyon is one of those trails that you, you just have to do. It's busy, but it is spectacular. Now, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon down below to make sure that you never miss a new episode. I'm Ward Cameron, and I'll talk to you in the next video.